In January 2016, the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision published its revised standards for minimum capital requirements for market risk. The revised standards are the result of Basel's fundamental review of the trading book, also known as FRTB. The new standards will have a significant impact on the way banks measure and manage market risk and capital. Minimum capital associated with trading risk exposure under Basel II was set based on a value at risk measure for approved banks. Shortly after the release of Basel 2.5 in 2009, the Committee on Banking Supervision initiated a fundamental review of the trading book. This effort resulted in the revised set of standards for minimum capital requirements for market risk, published in January 2016. The revised standards establish more objective criteria for inclusion of balance sheet positions in market risk capital and introduce two methods, the standardized approach and the internal models approach. The standardized and internal models approaches replace the current Basel II and 2.5 standards for measuring and reporting market risk capital. In the standardized approach, trading book market risk capital is the sum of a risk sensitivities based charge, a default risk charge, and a risk charge for instruments not captured by the first two components, referred to as a residual risk add-on. For each position in the trading book, a delta, vega, and a curvature based risk charge is calculated and map to the appropriate risk class. The total sensitivities based risk charge is the sum of delta, vega, and curvature risk charges across all asset classes. The credit component of the sensitivities charge captures the risk of mark to market loss from changes in credit spreads. Credit spread sensitivities, however, underestimate the loss from default in a stress event. The risk of loss from such an event is captured by the default risk charge. In the internal models approach, trading book market risk capital is the sum of three components, a risk charge based on expected shortfall, a default risk charge, and a risk charge for instruments not captured by the first two components, referred to as a stressed capital add-on. The introduction of expected shortfall is a fundamental shift away from a value at risk based approach to a measure of trading book loss that reflects the risk of markets becoming illiquid under stress. It is calculated as an expected loss at 97.5% confidence. Banks can use an historical simulation, a Monte Carlo simulation, and other models. Banks must be approved by local regulators to use expected shortfall to set minimum capital for market risk. Expected shortfall replaces the static 10-day horizon for all risk factors with horizons of up to 120 days based on risk class and risk factor within each class. The aggregate capital charge is the average of diversified expected shortfall and non-diversified partial expected shortfall capital charges and is referred to as the Internally Modeled Capital Charge, or IMCC. The standardized approach, or a portion thereof, is expected to set a floor to the internal models approach. This means that, even if a bank is approved for using the internal models approach, its minimum capital for market risk may be set higher as a percentage of capital measured under the standardized approach. In most, if not all, banks, Credit risk RWA is the primary driver of capital ratios. This is illustrated by the attribution of risk exposure in the common equity tier 1 or CET1 ratio, as shown in this graph for a number of banks. Conceptually, the increase in market risk weighted assets drives capital ratios lower and changes the proportions of capital ratios. The effect on an individual bank will depend on the size and type of risk exposure in the bank's trading book and its capital position. Optimal MRM invites you to visit its store online to learn more about this and other available market risk e-learning modules.